What's going on, everybody? I'm back with another Prize Picks NBA Player Props video. This one going to be breaking it down, giving you guys four picks here to win some money over here on Prize Picks in the NBA tonight. Excited to get into it. Uh, coming off a video last time out where I locked in with you guys, I'm going to be doing it again here today. Kind of talked about how uh, I recently got capped on Prize Picks. I can no longer place tickets where I can win more than a thousand dollars. So. I'm going to be changing up the content and locking in with you guys here as much as I can, mixing in maybe some live streams and stuff. i uh, got a bunch of plans ahead for 2024. I'm going to be traveling. I was supposed to fly yesterday. I said in yesterday's video, I actually have to change to Thursday. So that's why I'm still in my office and coming to you guys live with another video. Um, last night, I had a quick breakdown because I thought I was going to be flying out. Like I said, I was in a bit of a rush, but explained why I liked all these picks. Derek White, Clay Thompson, Grayson Allen. Um, Anthony Simmons, Yusuf Nurkic, Jeremiah Grant. And overall, the picks went great. We got hooked by Nurkic and Grant just coming up short for us. So um, if you tailed, we went 4-2. and two. Obviously, a little unfortunate. We would have preferred to double up and or sweep that ticket. But as far as from a winning percentage, uh, we are officially on a run on the channel. For those of you that are new, anytime that we're hitting above a 65% hit rate, I count it as a run in the title of the video. The reason that I do that is because if you're hitting above a 65% hit rate in price picks, you're going to have a really solid return on investment long term. You should be playing all five and six man flexes as much as possible on price picks. I already told my members, I told you guys yesterday on the channel, I am capped now. I tested this morning if I could put $100 on a four man power to win a thousand. I can. Six man flexes, I can only put 40 to win a thousand. Uh, I pretty much play all five and six man flexes. I've been requested by many people to give four man powers. I'm going to give one on the video today. Uh, but I want to be fully transparent with you guys. You should be playing all five and six-man flexes on price picks as much as possible. If you're able to hit out a 60% hit rate or higher on four-man powers, you can profit a lot of money, 30%. But most people aren't hitting at that much of a rate. Honestly, most people you're hitting you know, around 55% or upper 50s if you're really, really good at this stuff. And that's why you can see on the screen the five-man and six-man flexes are going to be the best long-term because even if you're only hitting at a 55% hit rate, you're getting that 5% return on investment, 7% return on investment if you're hitting uh, six-mans. And then if you get all the way up to 60% hit rate, rather than playing the four-man powers, you're playing six-man flexes, you're getting a much better return, 66% um, ROI. So I just want to make that known. I'm going to be playing a four-man power on this video. And I'm going to be putting uh, $100 myself. But for full transparency, once again, that is typically like a fourth of what I would be playing. Uh, I was playing $400 per six-man before I got capped. So... Uh, I don't want anyone playing more than they should be playing on these videos that I'm kind of opening up now and just blocking in live with you guys. Um, just know that I am playing, you know, the same. I'm playing less than what I typically would because it's all I can play. But like just an example, uh, I can no longer play over uh, $40 on six man flexes. It's going to tell me I can't. So I'm going to be locking in a four man power, all plays that I really do like. Um, uh, and a free slip for you guys. And once again, I'll be putting 100 live with you guys. But just do not be irresponsible, please, with your bankroll. If you're someone that typically only plays $5, only play $5 on this, okay? Because that is truthfully the biggest thing I'm a little concerned about uh, being open on the channel is people playing more than they should. I do not want that to happen. Uh, please be responsible with your bankroll. I really do like these picks. We have plenty of time this time. Uh, so I'm going to be breaking down exactly why I do like them. This level of research goes into every single one of my picks for all sports, all apps, all tickets that I place in the VIP member package. If you're listening, you're like, this guy knows what he's talking about. I want more content. I want every single one of his tickets. The KJK DFS VIP member package is going to be where it's at. That's linked below in the description. It is patreon.com slash KJK underscore DFS. You're going to get all my tickets as soon as I place them. Uh, I'm going, I already put in a six man flex already with my VIP members this morning. Uh, I'm going to be sending this format to them before I release it because I'm going to record this, send it to them so they can lock it in before the public. Then I will edit, upload this to you guys. Uh, but if you enjoy the content, it would be greatly appreciated if you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. It's free. It takes two seconds to do. This might be my last video for a while with the holidays with me traveling. Um, so once again, although I might not be uploading content, I never stop on the premium. It's daily. I can go place my tickets, send in my VIP members in the Discord. Um, for those of you who don't know, if you purchase the VIP member package, you're going to get access to my Discord. I had a bunch of more winners over there. I shared the sweep. I always share the sweeps on my uh, community page on YouTube. For those of you who don't know, um, this was the last one a day ago. Had a nice sweep. 
this was my last $10,000 win in the NFL uh, a week ago. So um, would love to have you join over there if you're interested. I just want to make sure that's known because I might not be uploading here for a little bit uh, with the traveling, but um, would love to have you join in a bunch of winners in the winner circle. I want to get into the picks. Uh, and a lot of rambling here to start. I just want to kind of let you guys know what's going on, um, you know, with the content, uh, kind of me moving forward, me trying to lock in some tickets with you on the channel, um, being open about what I'm playing, trying to teach you the right way to play. Uh, but the VIPs top tier for everything that you're looking to get from me. Um, if you're enjoying these free videos, so Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you enjoy the content. Let's get into it, guys. We'll go game by game. I got four picks for you here today, like I said. Um, and we'll break down exactly why I do like them. So, uh, picks number one and two are going to come in this Minnesota Timberwolves Philadelphia 76ers game. This game comes in with a 226 over under. It is a three and a half point spread in favor of the Philadelphia 76ers. We will kick things off on the Timberwolves side with Mr. Rudy Gobert, who is going to be very much needed tonight because he's taking on Arguably the best center in the entire NBA. Um, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic are the two guys that come to mind when we're talking about the top elite centers. Embiid's been absolutely crushing. Uh, but Rudy Gobert is one of the top defensive centers in the entire league. Uh, oftentimes winning defensive player of the year and a great fantasy point producer. Really what we're looking for for him is just some solid minutes and he's going to be able to crush his fantasy score prop oftentimes. He's putting up 1.16 fantasy points per minute as far as the prize fix fantasy score format on the year. And his fantasy points per game, he's putting up 36, playing approximately 32.2 minutes per game. So he's going to be playing in the mid to low 30s. And when we're looking at the two rotations for these teams uh, over the last few games, you can see Rudy Gobert played 35 last time against Miami, 25 and 30 in these games. You can see the 101, 119, 127, 109 final score, though. So those games did turn into blowouts. Games that have stayed competitive, he's been up there, like I said, mid-30s, upper 30s. And when you look at the rotations for the 76ers in competitive games, um, Joel Embiid, a guy that's going to play in the upper 30s in competitive games. They've been in a lot of blowouts. Like every single one of these games where he played 30, 29, 31, 30 are all blowouts here. Uh, last competitive game, he played 36, 38. So 37 last time against Chicago. That's kind of where Embiid's going to be if it's competitive. You know, we're looking at 35, 36, 37, 38 minutes. And if Rudy Gobert is able to stay out of foul trouble, I will fully admit that's the biggest uh, scare for me on this play. Is Joel Embiid's a really good center that can get his opposing uh, centers into foul trouble. It's a little bit dicey. Uh, but if there was ever a team that can slow down Embiid, it's this team with the big front court. It's Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert. They've been two of the top. Uh, they've been one of the best teams at defending the center position, which we'll talk about Embiid next. Uh, biggest thing for me is Rudy Gobert needs to be on the floor in this game. He's going to do his best to stay out of foul trouble, stay in there to defend Joel Embiid. And if he's able to stay in there, he should be able to crush uh, his fantasy score prop where Project has it set. Um, the latest on him, I'm hoping none of these plays got bumped. But like I said, I'm locking in live with you guys. So if they did, uh, one of them already did get bumped. <laughs> but we're still going to talk about it because um, I still like that under on... The next play, but this play, Rudy Gobert, 32.5 fantasy score. We're going with the over here. He's, he's uh, put up 42 last time out, 39, 60. Um, once again, we're looking at a few blowouts. So uh, a lot of this is obviously if the game does turn into a blowout, he's not going to be on the floor. Um, Gobert, you can see 127, 109 final score against Indiana. He only played 25 the time before, 121, uh, 107 final score, only played 25. So that really has to do more so with the blowouts. He's going to play in the mid-30s, upper-30s with Embiid guarding him. He should be able to crush this fantasy square prop here tonight uh, for pick number one. So pick number one, we're rocking with the over 32.5. As far as my latest projection on Mr. Gobert, I just like to kind of tell you guys uh, where I've got him right around. We're looking at the upper 30s, so it makes perfect sense, you know, 36, 37, 38, 39 or so. If he's able to play his allot normal allotment of minutes uh, with his fantasy score production, at that 1.16 uh, per minute clip. Um, should be able to have a good enough game to surpass this. We just need him to stay out of foul trouble. Um, we, against a beat, I will admit, it's a little bit dicey, but this is the game we play. And uh, if he's able to, he should be able to crush. Uh, last time he played the Sixers, he was able to surpass this. The only thing is MB did miss that game. So just so you guys know, 
It's obviously a little bit of a different uh, sample when Embiid's not playing. But he played 31 minutes. He put up 37.7 fantasy points in the prize picks fantasy scoring format. So that's right where I have him tonight. Um, once again, just stay out of foul trouble for us, and we should be good. Um, for pick number one, and then pick number two, I talked about how good they are at defending the center position, the Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, which is making me like the under on Embiid. Embiid, I have been taking his over like every single game, it seems. This is going to be the first time I'm on his under all season. My VIP members could vouch. It's like we've just been taking Embiid over fantasy every time he plays, it seems. And he's been crushing. He's putting up 1.86 fantasy points per minute. Now, the difference is he's taking on Rudy Gobert, like I had mentioned. Uh, he's one of the top defenders in the entire NBA. The Timberwolves have not been allowing a lot of points to opposing centers. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a difficult matchup for Joel Embiid. Um, so I'll get right to the point because I already saw this prop did get bumped. He was at 62. He's now at 61. I'm still going to promote the under here. Um, that's a little bit unfortunate because I really did like it at 62. But I still like it at 61. Like I said, he's been crushing. This is going to be the first time in a very long time. I think the first time possibly all year I've taken Joel Embiid's under. I've just been taking over, over, over on his fantasy score. Uh, but I, for the first time, haven't projected under. And it's because Minnesota's just been so good against centers. They're only giving up right around 26, 27 fantasy points per game to center starters. Only like four buckets per game. Obviously, it's Joel Embiid. Like, he's getting more than four buckets, but this is on averages. 6.6 uh, rebounds per game. Uh, so, going to be very difficult. They're number one in the entire NBA versus the center position um, defensively. So, they're really not giving up a lot of points to opposing centers at all. Um, on my end, they're ranked number one. FanDuel, as far as the fantasy scoring format on projects, is the same as FanDuel, for those of you who don't know. So, when I bring up this page, that's why. They're third best, so... Third best in the entire NBA as far as allowing um, fantasy points in the prize picks fantasy scoring format. I think this is going to be the first game in a very long time that Embiid struggles. Um, this was at 62. Sucks that I wasn't quite able to beat that. But like I said, I'm locking in live with you guys uh, on the breakdown. So um, I guess I'll be a little delayed locking in than what I typically am. But regardless, it's all good. I'm sharing it with you for a reason. Um, so that'll be pick number two. Like I said, Minnesota is one of the the very few front courts that can really match up with Embiid well because they do match up big with Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, and uh, talked about that Rudy Gobert matchup. Uh, as far as my projection on Embiid, I do have him right in the mid to upper 50s. So I'll give you a heads up right now. This is not going to be a fun sway. You, there, there's not a good chance you're going to be sitting there and just going, wow, Embiid's going way under. Like That's not this that type of play on this. This is more so like an Embiid's going to end in the 50s and not into the 60s. I mean, he's, he's one of the best fantasy point producers in the entire NBA, so just keep that in mind. You know, we're not playing this because we think Embiid's only going to score 30 fantasy points. We're playing this because we think Embiid's going to score in the 50s, not into the 60s. Um, so that'll be it for pick number two and pick number three. We'll kick it on down to, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers taking on the Chicago Bulls, uh, for pick number three, Kobe White, another guy I've been taking his over like every single night, it seems. And I'm going to continue to take his over tonight, not switching it up. Like we discussed with Embiid, um, cause a lot of factors. They continue to be without Zach Levine. Um, with Zach Levine off the court, Kobe White's usage has skyrocketed. No surprise. Uh, we look at some of these numbers. Uh, for the Chicago Bulls and the usage, 78 minutes played together so far. It's Vooch, 26%. DeRozan, 25%. And Kobe White, 20% as far as the usage rate breakdown. And then when we look at specifically the fantasy point per minute production, um, once again, this is FanDuel statistics, but this is the same fantasy scoring format that PrizePix has. So that's why I'm referring to these statistics. Obviously, it doesn't get much better than that. It's the same exact format. Uh, Kobe White, putting up 1.07 uh, fantasy points per minute as far as the per minute rate with no Zach Levine and Torrey Craig. I have these two guys off the court um, on the screen, as you can see. So with these two guys off the court, um, we're seeing a big increase in fantasy point per minute production for Kobe White. That usage rate's going up, obviously. And um, 1.07 fantasy points per minute compared to on the season for Kobe White. You can see his permanent rate is down at 
uh, 0.91. So he's going all the way up from 0.91 per minute to 1.07 per minute. Big increase in usage, fantasy point production, and minutes. This guy's playing like 40 minutes a game um, with no Levine on the court. 40, 39, 40, 34, 45, 39. So the minutes have just been uh, ridiculously good. The production's gone up, and we do once again have a, a good matchup here um, tonight for him in this one. Uh, for pick number three... Hopefully this didn't get bumped, and it hasn't so far. Okay, so 38.5. He's cleared this in each of the last five games, putting up 46.8. It all makes sense to me. I discussed, you know, he's playing like 40 minutes a game. He's putting up over a fantasy point per minute. That's going to put him in the 40s every time he plays. I have him projected in the 40s here once again tonight. Uh, as far as the latest projection on Kobe, right around 40. I mean, you know, you're not going to get too much of an edge, but his ceiling's upper 40s. And the Lakers are giving up 38 fantasy points per game. Uh, plus two opposing point cards, that's really bad. Um, that puts them as 24th in the entire NBA, so sixth worst. Um, we're seeing opposing point guards. The Chicago Bulls have a 110 implied total. Uh, Kobe White, do we expect him to have some more success here tonight? Um, for pick number three, talked about it. No Levine, his usage has gone way up. Um, he's really been producing at a much better rate. And then pick number four, last one. Um, Another guy that I've been playing is over like every game, it seems. And it's going to be DeJounte Murray in a fantastic game environment. 234 over under, three-point spread. This game's expected to stay close. DeJounte Murray, as far as his fantasy point production on the season, he's a solid one fantasy point per minute guy, a little bit over. He's putting up 1.08 fantasy points per minute, and he's typically playing right in the 30s as far as his minutes are concerned. He's got a 24% usage rate. Him and Trey Young kind of alter as far as the... Um, minutes and who's running the point guard position for the Hawks, but he's playing 34.3 minutes per game. He's putting up 37.5 fantasy points per game. He's in the upper 30s in fantasy point production and price just continues to price him in the low 30s. It really makes no sense to me, but I am not complaining because I love this spot for him. Um, once again, this game should fly. You look at the top projected pace uh, matchup for this slate tonight. They are, this game's the second highest. So a 100 projected pace that trails only the Charlotte Hornets-Indiana Pacers game. I think that DeJounte Merritt should absolutely crush. You look at the fantasy, um, sorry, the rotation as far as minutes in competitive games. You can see he's right around 33, 37, 33, 34, 38. Um, in competitive games, he's going to play mid to upper 30s. And if he does that, he's going to obviously score in the mid to upper 30s, putting up over one fantasy point per minute. He's a guy that can get you blocks, steals. Uh, we talked about Rudy Gobert liking his over. He's going to get you a lot of blocks. Um, we'll pull up Kobe White for you guys to kind of see how he's getting the job done. Uh, just kind of give you guys a visual. I always do this, but I talked about it. he's playing like 38, 39, 40 minutes. Um, getting you a couple blocks and steals, but he's really getting it done in the PRA category. Those peripherals will take as an extra little bonus. You never know the game. He'll pop up for like two, three steals. That'd be fantastic. And then DeJounte Murray, similar thing to Kobe White. He's going to score. He's going to get you those assists. Um as kind of that point guard, shooting guard role. But he can really contribute in the steals and blocks as well. Uh, and you can see 20 points, one block, one steal, three assists, three rounds last time out, 21, one, one, six, and three. That's how he's going to do it. He's a pretty well-rounded player. Um, for pick number four, we're rocking with the over fantasy score here. Uh, for DeJounte Murray at 34.5. So this will be my four picks. Um, and I will lock in right now with you guys. So Rudy Gobert, we're going over. Um, Joel Embiid, we're going under. Kobe White, we're going over. DeJounte Murray, we're going over. It looks like they just dropped some more fantasy score props, so I might like some of those picks even more than these ones. Um, but I wanted to lock in on four that I really liked and share them with you guys here for free. Uh, so let's lock it in. Rudy Gobert, more. Embiid, under. White over, Jonte Murray over. I'm going to lock in the four power play. Once again, guys, I am capped on my account, so I can only put in a maximum for a $1,000 win. So I'm going to be putting in $100. Uh, stick to your unit size, whatever yours is. If you're typically someone that plays like $5, don't go overboard with this. Um, you should be playing all five and six man flexes, most notably. Uh, for me, this is about a quarter of what I was playing before the cap. I was playing a lot of $400 six mans. So I just want to make that clear. Don't go crazy, guys, because you see me putting 100 
uh, I'm still being responsible with my bankroll. Um, if you're someone that plays smaller, play smaller, you know, put whatever you typically would put on this. Uh, but going to lock this in right now over Rudy Gobert, under for Joel Embiid, over Kobe White, over for DeJounte Murray. Uh, we should be rocking and rolling. So let's do it. Let's lock in here. And let's try to win this thing here tonight for you guys for free. So once again, if you're looking to get access to all of my picks, uh, my premium content is going to be where it's at. Already locked in a six man, uh, as you can see in my entries. But for the video today, um, we're rocking with this, man. Four man power. I locked him with you guys live. So you can see I am backing the plays with my own money. I'll be doing this more often now that I'm capped, I guess. Just changing the content, trying to lock in with you guys and do a quick breakdown of an in-depth breakdown when I can, like I did today, of why I really like these plays. So, um, yeah, that's what we're rocking with, guys. Over Rudy Gobert Fantasy, under Joel Embiid, over Kobe White, um, over DeJounte Murray. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. It's free. It takes two seconds to do. Once again, I don't know how consistent I'm going to be with the, with the content throughout the holidays because I will be traveling. I'll do my best, but I know the premium is not going to stop if you want access to every single one of my picks, all of my tickets for all sports, all apps that I cover as soon as I place them. It is patreon.com. That will be linked below in the description. And that will give you access to my Discord uh, with all my tickets as soon as I place them, guys. So I'm going to send this pick that I just gave you guys out, this slip that I gave out on the channel to them right now before I upload. And I will have more. It's a good slate. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 games or whatever the case may be. Um, so we'd love to have you join over there. Thank you for tuning in. Wishing you all the best of luck on your prize picks, NBA player props tonight, and we will see you in the next one.